Life as we know it today brings with it all sorts of grief and stress and regret. Sometimes this grief is due to a financial worry. Other times it's relating to a health concern. Whilst other times this stress and fear could be because of an enemy who is in the waiting. The stress and grief of dunya comes in many different sizes and shapes and forms. However, regardless of how intense and severe this level of fear, and stress and grief may become in the life of a person today, it doesn't usually cause a mother to forget her child. Nor does it usually cause a child to go gray. Nor does it usually cause people to behave as if they are drunk because of the stress and grief. Because these three descriptions that you and I just heard, they are a description of the stress of one day, exclusively one day and one day alone. And that is the day of judgment. Allah Almighty said, depicting the intensity and the fear and grief of that day, He said, on that day you will see every nursing mother forgetting her nursling. And every pregnant woman will drop her load. And you will see people behaving as if they are drunk. But they are not drunk. It is the punishment of Allah Almighty that is severe. So colossal is the stress and fear of that day. That Allah Almighty, He said, it is a day that will make children go gray. On that day, humanity in their billions, they will be divided into one of two categories without a third. The first of these categories is Al Aminun, those who are at peace, those who experience security, those who will be experiencing the unthinkable form of happiness during the day of fear. We shall give them security. They are those who singled out Allah Almighty in worship. And they were sincere in everything they did. And they tackled every haram craving, every sinful habit, outwardly, inwardly, publicly, <coughs> privately. They tackled that sin head on before the meeting of death. The greatest terror, the day of judgment, will not grieve them in the least. Ya salam. As for the second category, it is the polar opposite. They are the terrorized ones. They are al khaifun they are Anadimun, the regretful ones. These are the petrified ones. Their hearts reach their throats about to exit because of the fear. And they will be in an overwhelming state of hasra, regret, which is the key word for today. So regretful they will be that some of them would have lowered their heads in shame. And they will be heard saying to Allah, Oh Allah, we now see. And we can now hear, so please allow us to return to dunya so that we may do good. We are now very certain. Whilst a second group will be heard screaming out in regret, saying, How great is our regret because we didn't give this thought. Whilst a third group will be suicidal on the day of judgment, craving for death as they shriek out, saying, I wish I was dust. We wish death was the end, they will say. Regret is the key word for today. Regret is the name of that very powerful emotion, the negative emotion that is. That every one of us has experienced at one level or another. So overwhelming regret can be in the life of a person that if it is not managed with Iman and certainty and Quran and Salah, a person may become suicidal. In fact, the Harvard newsletter documents the story of an old man who lived in Liverpool. And this was a man who would always choose the exact 
same set of lottery numbers each week. He wouldn't change, trying his luck as they say. And on one of those particular days, subhanAllah, he forgot to renew his lottery ticket numbers. And what happened? His numbers came up. And this poor man was in such a state of self-blame and regret that he didn't know how to manage this and so he committed suicide. I mention this because people will wish a similar outcome on the Day of Judgment. People will be pleading with Allah Almighty for death. Why? Because Yawmul Qiyamah is called Yawmul Hasra, the Day of Regret. That is one of its names. Thus Allah said, warn them, O Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, of the Day of Regret. Warn them, whilst people are still asleep and others, they will not believe in Allah. The Day of Regret. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, as Imam Al-Bukhari narrates in his Sahih on the authority of Abi Huraira, giving us one of the harrowing scenes of regret that will appear on this day. He said, there isn't any person who was taken to Jannah on the Day of Judgment, except that he has to first see his potential home in Jahannam, the Hellfire. Had he failed on that day, so that his heart fills with gratitude to Allah and thanks. And he said, then there isn't any person who was made to enter the Hellfire, except that Allah will make him see his potential home in Jannah, had he passed on this day so that he is encompassed with regret and sadness, Allahu Akbar. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has in fact informed us of several matters that will bring hasra, regret on the Day of Judgment. And we will mention just six of those today so that we know the roadmap, we know exactly how to prepare, to spare ourselves and our families from the regret of the Day of Regret. What are these six things? Number one, those who do not give Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter two of the Quran, its due attention. Isn't that a strange one? When the rewards are distributed on the day of judgment to the people of the Quran, and specifically to the people of Surah Al-Baqarah, those who had ignored Surah Al-Baqarah will be taken by regret. Thus the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said as Imam Muslim narrates in his Sahih on the authority of Abi Umamat al-Bahili, he said, always recite Surah Al-Baqarah. Because taking care of this Surah is a barakah, it is a blessing. And not doing so will be a regret on the Day of Judgment. And the magicians are not able to overcome it. As for the second source of regret, this is in relation to any gathering whether with family or friends or online, where the name of Allah Almighty is not mentioned. Thus the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says as Abi Dawood narrates in his Sunan, on the authority of Abi Hurairah, he said any people who sit in a gathering whereby they do not remember the name of Allah Almighty or mention Him in any way, except that when they leave that gathering, it would have been as if they were sat around the dead body of a donkey. And that gathering will be regret for them on the Day of Judgment. Subhanallah and Azim. What about number three? The third cause of regret is with regards to those individuals who aspired for positions of authority. They wanted to be in the limelight. They wanted people to clap for them. They sought after attention and praise. And that is why the Prophet ﷺ, he says, as our mother Aisha narrates in the hadith of Sahih al-Bukhari, he said, O oh Muslims, you will soon start competing over positions of authority. And on the day of judgment, that's going to bring with it regret. So how great is breastfeeding? And how difficult is weaning? What is that all about, that last sentence? The Messenger وسلم, is comparing positions of authority and those who always want it with the breastfeeding child, who is always receiving its nutrition and its milk readily available from its mother with no effort from itself. But there has to come a day when that child must be weaned, when that milk has to come to a stop 
and similarly those who aspire for positions of authority and status in the community despite not being deserving of it are not possessing the credentials their wealth and their prestige and their honor will have to come to a stop at one point and that will be on the day of judgment when wealth and prestige will be replaced with regret for aspiring for a position that you are not fit for as for the fourth cause of regret this will be with regards to a person who puts forward acts of worship but they contain within them hidden elements of showing off this is a person who has dedicated years upon years of what he called worship and Quran and Salah and Taraweeh and Qiyam and fasting and dhikr and da'wah and a flawless hijab and enjoining good and forbidding evil and Islamic events and Islamic reminders and Islamic posts and they see these good deeds in the form of mountains on the day of judgment beautiful mountains and to his horror they begin to crumble before his very eyes can you imagine their regret that is because those good deeds although they were huge but they had holes within them they were rotten they had holes of showing off they had holes of pride holes of self-admiration holes of self-promotion look at me what i am doing what i am up to where i am found what i am reciting where i am praying holes of showing off thus those deeds come crumbling down on the day of judgment causing regret one of the scariest ayat from the quran as some of our predecessors they said they will see with allah almighty that which they did not expect billah. as for the fifth cause of regret this is when you find yourself being forced on the day of judgment to hand over your good deeds to somebody else or when you are for forced to carry the sins of somebody sins that you didn't even commit can you imagine what that means imagine on yom al qiyamah you are forced by the angels to hand over two thousand three thousand prayers to somebody else to your neighbor can you imagine handing over two or three or ten Ramadan's worth of hard work and thirst and sacrifice to somebody else who didn't do it? Worse still, can you imagine carrying the sins of people, sins that you didn't commit? Imagine reading your book on the Day of Judgment and you find zina, fornication, you find adultery, you find alcohol, you find interest, you find pornography, you find sins that you didn't commit others have transferred them onto you and now you have to find an answer before Allah for these sins that you didn't do how can that situation take place by oppressing another Muslim by wronging another individual thus the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam says in the famous hadith which Imam al-Bukhari narrates on the authority of Abi Huraira he said Whoever of you has wronged his brother in any way, whether in regards to his honor or any other way, then make sure you beg his forgiveness today before a day comes where there will be no dinar and no dirham. He said, if you have good deeds on that day, he will be allowed to take from your good deeds depending on the size of your wrongdoing. If however your good deeds, they run out before you pay your debt, then he will be allowed to transfer his sins onto you. This is one of the most frightening and disturbing realities of the Day of Judgment, Wallah. The reality that states, you and I cannot give a single good deed to the people we love the most. Your mother, your father, your wife, your children, they will ask you and you will refuse because you need that good deed just as much as they do. Whilst on the other hand, some people will be forced to give over their good deeds to the people they hate and they despise. Because they had backstabbed them, mocked them, conspired against them, plotted against them, failed to pay their wages on time or any other type of wrongdoing. He said, let him beg his forgiveness today. Number six, generally speaking, and this is the overarching cause of regret that summarizes everything you just heard 
any Muslim individual who falls short with regards to the minutes, the hours of his days and his weeks in building the hereafter. That is going to be a cause of regret. A person who was urged week in, week out, every Friday, every reminder to drop the sins, to replace the haram with halal, to remove the intoxicant, to change sin into obedience, to reshuffle the cards, to refocus your attention on Allah and the home of the hereafter, to set a vision in life in preparation for Jannah, and they fail to do so. That will be a major cause for regret, as people will be heard saying on the Day of Judgment, I wish that I had prepared for my life. In conclusion, dear brother, dear sister, every individual who turns a blind eye and pretends that the day of regret is not coming is going to be in a major and excruciatingly painful state of regret on the day of judgment. What greater regret can there be in life than failing to impress the King Allah Almighty? What greater regret can there be in life than failing the exam before the King Allah and missing out on the prize that comes with passing the prize of Jannah. What greater regret can there be than that? What greater regret can there be in existence than being shown your place in Jannah and the luxuries and the weather and the palaces and the spouses but then being transferred to oblivion to Jahannam instead? What greater regret can there be in life than meeting your friends on the day of judgment, those whom you knew today and they find no words for you and I except didn't I tell you didn't I tell you what are we to do about this these are six six of the many matters that will bring regret on the day of judgment it's an open book exam we have the answers with us already so that the preparation can start from today the answer we need to create an action plan and set goals for every one of these six matters we identified. We mentioned number one, if you remember, neglecting Surah Al-Baqarah is a cause for regret. What is the plan for that? Why don't we team up with a family member or a friend to have Surah Al-Baqarah memorized from cover to cover, from beginning to end. Within six months, set a target, a clear target. Within a year, Surah Al-Baqarah will be memorized in my family. And then set another target to understand every ayah within this blessed surah. Recite it frequently in your house, it evicts shaitan from the home. To deal with this aspect of regret, so that this regret becomes an opportunity on al qiyamah. That was number one, Surah Al-Baqarah. Number two, we spoke about the gatherings where the name of Allah Almighty is not mentioned. That's a cause of regret. What is our plan for that? The plan could be to convert every gathering where the name of Allah Almighty is not mentioned into a gathering of dhikr and remembrance. At least by remembering the salawat upon the messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, salutations upon him, stopping somebody in his tracks when he is backstabbing, remembering Allah, turning it into an Islamic reminder, even if it's passing, so that that regret, so that that gathering doesn't become a means of regret, yawm al qiyamah. That was number two. As for number three, we mentioned those who aspire for positions of authority and they want their name to be at the forefront of every project. That's a cause of regret. What is our plan for that? The plan could be to train ourselves to love working for the deen of Islam behind closed doors, behind the curtains, away from the limelight, away from the cameras, to train ourselves to hate the praise of people and to hate their thanks, rather to only want the gratitude and thanks of Allah. Number four, we said that the cause of regret is a person who meets Allah with acts of worship, but they have holes in them, in sincerity. And undoubtedly, sincerity, ikhlas is an ongoing struggle, a lifelong one for every single one of us. <coughs> However, we can train for this one by monitoring our intention before every speech and every statement, every action of ours monitoring our hearts more than the diabetic people monitor their blood sugar levels. Our hereafter depends upon it. We said number five, a cause of regret, the person who wrongs his brother in any way. What is the plan for that? To go to him, to go to her, you know exactly who they are and how you have wronged them. We know. And even if you need to fall onto your knees 
and you need to cry your eyes out, begging forgiveness. Yes, it requires courage. Yes, it requires humility. But that is far easier than donating the only thing you and I will have on the Day of Judgment to them, and that is our good deeds. Beg them to pardon you. Number six, we mentioned the cause of regret. Somebody who wastes his time not preparing for the hereafter. What is the plan for that? The plan for that is to brainstorm your talents, to brainstorm the resources Allah has given you as a student or as a professional, as a male, as a female, as young, as old. What has Allah given you? And then take these talents, show them to somebody you trust, whether it is a scholar of Islam, or whether it is a friend whom you love or a family member whom you trust, show them. This is what I have. What is my vision in life? What is the strategy that I'm going to dedicate in the life of this world to meet Allah with on the day of judgment? He does not live, I take each day as it comes type of life. He is working, she is working to strict targets, to clearly defined objectives, to a very clear vision which he has set in dunya to impress Allah with on the day of judgment. These are some of the causes of regret on the day of judgment and this is our roadmap to deal with them.